Hey, so this video will be part two of the customization video uh, instead of Moto. Now the previous video, uh, what it was about was creating a multi-level Pi menu. And at the end of it, I mentioned two things uh, in terms of how to save your configurations. So if I go into the form editor, uh, what I've mentioned is that whatever menu you've made, whatever, anything, any kind of changes that you've done here, I recommended that you basically right click, right click and save the form. The other way was to go into file and save config, and that will basically save all your information, any kind of changes that you've done inside of Moto, it'll save it into a single file. So let me show you exactly um, where that is and how that works. So if I go into this folder here, now I'm pretty sure this must have changed because I mean, it's no longer Luxology, it's now, you know, the boundary. So the path might have actually changed to something else, whatever. Find where your Moto configs are and, you know, and then we can look, look at, you know, how it's all structured and, you know, how it works. So really what, what we have here is you have a whole bunch of files. I mean, granted, this is usually cleaner when you're working with it from scratch, but you have your license file and then you'll have a, like, for example, Moto config, uh, you know, 1101 or 801 or whichever. So this basically, every single one of these uh, Moto versions has its own configuration file. And if you open it uh, with Notepad or something like that, you'll get something like this. So every single one of your config files will store everything that basically defines how Moto works. It'll store things like hotkeys, it'll store all your uh, configuration, and, and again, any kind of changes that you've done to the interface internally into this file. But at the same time, at the beginning of this file, what you'll notice also is that there is, in fact, scripts, forms, configs, scripts, kits, and things like that, right? And what this basically tells the configuration file is to load a, load any kind of external files outside of this file. And this helps because when, if you ever get into a case where Moto crashes, or rather, if this config file, if the master config file, if this thing gets corrupt, then you will have to recreate all those changes again, or just back up your you know config file. But the best thing you could do, especially when moving forward in versions, so like let's just say if you're using, like in my case, I'm using version 8, and I want to move on to version 9, uh, if I were to just copy and paste this entire config file into version 9, it would break. And the reason why is because the entire user interface for Moto changed around that time. Version 8, 9, uh, 10 changed a lot of the um, user interface for Moto. So if I were to import that same master file, it would just completely break. But the individual forms, however, they stayed pretty much more or less the same. And so when I create new um, new configs for Moto, what I do is I load up little snippets, right? So little parts of user interfaces into Moto itself. So uh, it's best to really keep files in these folders and then basically import them into whichever config. So as you can see here, I have a bunch of folders and then I have uh, you know, inside of forms, I have a whole bunch of these here, right? So I have like uh, my MKPy menu that I showed you guys earlier. Then I have a whole bunch of others that were created by other users. And I have some of my own as well. And then if I go back out to here, I have all my scripts that I've downloaded. Um, these are, a lot of them are by Seneca Menard and a few other users. So what really what's going on is I have these folders basically being piped into the Moto uh, 801 configuration file. So th those imports uh, basically load stuff from within these folders. And so every time you upgrade a version, all you have to do is you just have to basically open up like a uh, Moto 901, right? Go to uh, edit with Notepad or whichever app you want to, and then just change this to point to the actual paths. Um, of these folders, and then that will be automatically loaded into uh, your version that you're using. So now that we're done with that, now that now that I've described that, um, I think the next thing that I want to talk about is the hotkeys. So on the topic of the input editor, um, actually not the form editor, I want the input editor. Just go into it. All right. 
So uh, here's the thing. You have a bunch of uh, contacts, edit modes, viewports, you know, whatever. I usually just go to edit mode viewport and, you know, keep it that way. Uh, so just set it this way and, you know, everything will be more or less okay. So basically here, you, you like this part of the window is where you get to input any kind of tools into the hotkey. So you have on the left hand side, you have what key you need to press or what sets of keys that you need to press. And then which tool uh, in this column here, which tools are going to be actually um, invoked or which scripts even as you notice, there's a loop slice decide.pl, right? That's a script. So uh, generally what you would do is, you know what, let me just delete this one here. So I'm going to remove this modifier and then recreate it. So uh, the way I've done my um, hotkeys, the, the really cool ones uh, with the modifiers, is that you would have to create a new modifier. And so what modifiers are, are any key that you can press and hold. And uh, so they're not just regular hotkeys where you press and that's it. And then it, it will turn on a tool. Uh, pressing and holding allows you to uh, then also use the mice buttons. So let's just say if I uh, create a new modifier and I'm going to then, oh, nope, I'm going to press U. And so on the modifier U or the, the hotkey U, uh, if I go to it, uh, you'll see something like this. Now, I should note that you should actually press the show unmapped keys because otherwise it doesn't really work that way. So show unmapped keys and you'll have like a whole list of you uh, unmapped keys. And so, and you know what? I should probably clear this mapping because again, I want to kind of start from scratch. Okay. So under the U hotkey, I have U left click, U right click, U middle click, and so on and so on. And so uh, what you can do is you can press and hold U and then press left click to get one one tool, U middle click to get another tool, and U right click to get another another tool. And this is freaking awesome because now I can basically go to U left click and let's just say I, I don't know, use a bunch of deformers or in, uh, duplication tools. So let's just say I use the mirror tool. And then once I click on this, I can go into the command history, just like in the previous video, click on the bottom entry, and then from the input, uh, whatever it spits out, the enter with that tool into here. So enter it, press enter, and then that'll set it to U, left click. And I'm going to do the same thing again with clone. So polygon clone uh, into right click. And then under middle click, I'm just going to maybe use something like array or maybe even radial mesh. So set tool to radial array so and that's going to be you uh, middle click okay so i have three tools right basically on a single hotkey so you left click middle click right click and let's test it out so uh, let me just uh, select this tool here and i'm going to select just maybe a small portion of it so you left click and as you can see i just mirrored that part of the uh, uh, you know asset uh, you middle click and as you can see, the radial array is working. All right. And then let's pick this and press U right click. And as you can see, I am in fact cloning. So uh, that aspect worked beautifully. Okay, so uh, we've done that. But now the next thing I probably want to talk about is, um, is doing something else. Because you don't only have to um, press one modifier. You can actually press multiple if you want. And um, in my case, what I've actually done is I have, for example, some hotkeys where if you press uh, under, let's just say control, and then just hold shift on your keyboard and then press shift here. And then that way you can select um, multiple. And you know, I don't want alt. Why is alt being selected? Okay, so that maybe control. Okay, so it's actually control. So I uh, held control, selected this, selected this. And now, now, as you can see, I have a bunch of other options. So Control shift left click, control shift right click, control shift middle click. And so I have um, set edge knife on and loop slice and loop, loop slice again. There are two scripts. But basically, I have, if I press control shift and left click, middle click, right click, I'll have three different tools on there. And again, those are generally hotkeys. The modifiers, the shift control, are generally used for things like selections and navigating and things like that. But you can also like cram tools into those 
hotkeys as well, which basically means, again, that you don't have to dance around the keyboard. You have the tools that you use the most often exactly where your thumb and middle finger and forefinger and, you know, and, and index finger, they're all uh, in that area anyways. So it'll speed you up a lot by having more tools crammed to there and anything within like, um, you know, E, D, C, R, F, V, um, as long as you're not, again, extending your hand into different like weird motions, as long as you're in a, com in a kind of like a comfortable spot, then you can map a lot of hotkeys uh, with these modifiers uh, that way. So, um, and again, once you're done with that, uh, because this editor actually, if you again, if you look into the input editor, uh, this thing actually doesn't have any kind of like config save, unfortunately. So what you have to do is at the end of the day, once you're done with all of these changes to your hotkeys, go into file and config save or just config export, whichever one. And then you want to go into here. And if you open up one of your configs, and let's just say you open up again with um, with Notepad or something like that. Then towards the bottom or somewhere along here, I guess you're going to get some hotkeys. So you just have to find exactly where they are. Now, generally, when you save them, when you save hotkeys, they'll be at the very bottom. And basically, you just copy and paste them into a new file, and that should look sort of like this. So I have MK keys, and if I open up with Notepad, you should get something like this, where you have you know, all your hotkeys basically in one file. And again, the importance of this is that if you upgrade Moto, you don't have to reset all your hotkeys anymore. You basically just make sure that you put, um, you know, this file into here and you have all your other scripts and forms and anything that you've done to customize Moto, you have it all within these folders. And then when you're importing like all of this into uh, Moto, then you got to make sure that you're Moto 801, 901, 12, 13, 14, whichever one, uh, dot config. All you really need is just to make sure that the import folders are in there and it'll import all that information into uh, that Moto config and then you're good to go. Yeah, because otherwise, again, if you don't do that, um, if, you, um, if you don't save into individual files, then if Moto changes, if Foundry ends up changing the Moto interface at any point and all you have is a master file, then if that master file becomes corrupt, you're you're kind of screwed, right? Because now your all your changes that you have in your master file are just invalid anymore, right? So again, your Moto master config always changes with every single version of Moto, period, because Foundry is always um, fiddling around and they're changing things around. So you don't want your most important information in there, right? They're going to provide you with that file. What you should be doing is working on individual files outside of that and then importing them into uh, your Moto session whenever you op open. So basically, you import that stuff by with paths into your uh, master file. I hope that helps. Cheers.